Howdy folks, it's Corey of Nuts and Zolts, and like you, I am very excited about Minecraft's latest redstone edition, the Skulk Sensor. What this means for the redstone community is, of course, wireless redstone, and I'm certainly not the first person to bring this up. However, while I've seen a number of people use them serially, or one redstone signal at a time, I'm more interested in exploring wider buses. Now, as you probably know, skulks detect movement, which happens in a sphere around them. This means if you have more than one skulk next to each other, they are most likely going to detect the same movements, at least where the spheres overlap. Overlap is key. We're going to explore the areas where two or more skulks don't overlap. Here's a living diagram of what I mean. These two skulk sensors are on neighboring blocks. I have a series of buttons which they can detect. Where there's purple, both skulks will detect the button presses. But where there's red and blue, only one skulk will detect movement. Incidentally, skulk sensors have a great feature called debounce. Debounce is simply a feature where if a button makes too many signals in too little time, it still is only interpreted as one pulse. This term comes from the fact that when you push a button, imperceptible to you, but totally perceptible to a computer, the button presses bounce from vibration or incomplete contact, causing multiple reads. Debounce protects you from that. This feature is useful in other places, for example, when observers send too many pulses from changing blocks. But back to wide buses. This example is two bits wide, meaning we can only send four combinations of signals. Left, right, left and right, or neither left and right. Four is two to the power of two. Over here we have 10 buttons. Incidentally, this seven segment display is inspired by Mumbo Jumbo Smart Display, but I just needed something to demonstrate a wider bus. If you'd like to know more about his seven segment display, the link is below. Each of these 10 buttons corresponds to a numeric character. Pushing the button on the left gives us a one. And pushing the button on the right, gives us a zero. And then the other base 10 numbers in between. This bus is exactly 10 blocks wide, but can only go one series of Skulka sensors far. If we want to relay the sensors, we need to introduce wool blocks, which will double the width of the machine with the same bus width. This is because we have to use motion to activate the next skulk in the series. Incidentally, notice how the gate doesn't trigger the skulk, which opened it. This is an example of the bounce. This version can be extended to any length, but otherwise it is the same machine, the same overall system. Now, even though this is a 10 bit wide bus, there are only 10 corresponding signals, those being one for each character. This is not a very efficient use of bus width. A 10-bit bus should have 1,024 combinations, or two to the power of 10, not 10 signals, period. Can we do better? Yes. Keeping the function down to a seven segment display, I have made a seven bit bus 
one bit for each segment. Technically, this gives us two to the power of seven combinations, which is 128 combinations, but most of those combinations are meaningless. Regardless, this is a functioning 7-bit bus, just with 10 combinations to represent our characters. Here, we have the same button system to select a number. But when a number is selected, an array of skulk sensors receives one of 128 combinations of signals. Now notice, there's an array of pistons that go up and down. One of the challenges of sending a wide bus of signals is timing, sending all of the signals at once. When we select a number, the same mechanism which stores the number, or more accurately, the corresponding combination of segments needs to be read. We've literally made a memory device. In essence, we have a command buffer. When the command buffer is read, we send the command across the bus and all at once. This is one of the essential features of a computer. And as long as we don't change the command buffer, we can send the command multiple times. In fact, we have to. Let me show you. The command buffer is here in blue. You can see that if we push eight, all seven segments of the display will be on. But if we push zero, only six will be on. And if we push one, only two will be turned on. To send the command buffer, we need to send a signal to read the function, which is represented here in green. But watch, we use two read functions for every command we issue. Read one, read two. And now we have four. Why is that? To explore why, I have a cheater button which will allow us to trigger the read function without changing the command. Notice what's happening? It's erasing the display. In order to toggle the segments to off, we need to repeat the old command before we store and send the new command. This is so cool. This happens in your computer countless times a second. You cannot simply count the megahertz or gigahertz. This is happening across trillions of constantly shifting bits every second. But what causes this toggle action? The mighty flip-flop, one of the simplest but most essential types of memory. When we send the read, some of the seven flip-flops are flipped. When we want to perform another command, we must flip only the activated bits again. Otherwise, we would end up with the opposite segments to our desired character. Of course, we don't need skulk sensors to use these tools, but we may need these tools to send wireless redstone over skulks. I hope this has been fun and informative. Thanks to Mumbo for a smart display. It's a great use case for these ideas. And thank you for watching. This is Corey of Nuts and Zolts. We look forward to sharing art, technology, and pastimes with you again soon.